Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Nature Folklore Sessions. It's 22nd of August, 2021. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me for our weekly time of exploring our uh, nature-centered folklore, connecting this to your favorite sanctuary space that I hope you're relaxing in right now, and expressing inspired visions from your sanctuary through your poetry, writing, arts, crafts, performance, and even problem solving. Now, this afternoon, it is a poetry session uh, on nature folklore, and this is the last day of uh, Heritage Week here in Ireland, uh, 2021. And uh, poetry is significant. It's, I love it when we have these poetry sessions. All the poets we got this afternoon, they are Irish. Uh, so sorry for the international people who put poems in. But as you know, through the year, we do include poems from all over the world on the different themes that we have. And here I am in, in Claire's garden uh, again this week. Uh, sorry, I haven't got the where the flowers are. When I was setting up, the sun was bright. It was glaring all the equipment. So I had to go around to where there wasn't solar glare, but happened to be where the least flowers are. So I hope you enjoy the background scene that uh, we got here. Now, the whole point is to say with the poetry, and I have repeated this a few times, uh, but I don't think we see can, I can say too much of it. The idea of the nature folklore, and it has been with me through my own life experience. I love the folklore stories uh, to help understand the seasons, the cycles, nature, the weather changes. And all of those, to me, are, are very visionary, aren't they? A lot of poets will explain things according to how they feel with the weather conditions and what time of year it is. And those visions I find are so useful, not only for expressing, but I think we find when we do express, it's very visionary so we, things start to become clear. And uh, it's great on the heritage because a lot of people look to the heritage uh, to the, look for their roots, don't they? they look for the roots uh, as an understanding of who they are what their place is, I think, in this world, and uh, where to go from there. It's like a prophecy of our present. So anyway, let's talk about our guests, uh, because I've got some pictures of them there. The guest today, uh, we've got um, Edward Durand. Uh, he's uh, going to be their first one up. And uh, we've got uh, a lovely regular, uh, B. Smith, uh, is coming along. Fergus Hogan, which has who has quite a few fans here. we got a nice wee thing from him. Uh, Sinead McClure, who's almost a neighbor of mine. We don't get her on enough, but uh, she's going to be on today, which is great. Eileen Monahan, who's actually in the back room waiting to do her lovely thing today. And uh, Cathal, uh, he's supposed to be on live anyway. Uh, uh, Cathal Matrina, um, he's been on a few times. Let's hope he manages to arrive today and say something for us. We've got Claire Roach in Claire Roach's uh, garden, so uh, if I can just get you a, just in case you need a reminder of Claire Roach. Uh, oh, we've got uh, some live visitors on the way in as well. There she is. I love this picture of Claire Roach. Very gothic. There you go. And uh, Jessamine O'Connor, uh, one of uh, Russ Common's poets, uh, highly rated and regarded there. Uh, Rosalind and uh, Callahan, oh, I'm so pleased. She came on to me uh, asking to be on the show uh, yesterday, I think it was, and uh, up there from Derry, uh, so delighted. And uh, we're going to do an encore of Lisa Moran. Uh, you might remember her. She does the underwater dancing. So we got here. So there we go. That's who we got uh, today uh, on the lineup. And, uh, of course, a reminder that uh, thank you, uh, some of you are supporters. Uh, this is actually funded by our subscribers, our patrons. Uh, helps me to pay the monthly subscriptions to the various services to make this possible. So thank you. So that's uh, how this happens and how I'm actually here for you today. So let's see uh, who we've got here today who's already joined us. Uh, oh, Edward's on. Yeah, Ed from Sligo. Great, because you're going to be first on. 
uh, he's looking forward to. We've got a lovely regular over from Maine, uh, Sherry Murphy there. And Fergus is on board. Uh, and we got a lovely treat from uh, Fergus as well. And Alan has popped in, as he usually does, uh, and making his balloons. There we go. So that's absolutely uh, fabulous. And um, right. Um, as I said, we got Edward first up. And Edward, uh, we haven't actually got him on live, though he is in the audience there. So we do have a video from Edward. It's a short one. But Edward, as I've mentioned before, he was a founder when we did the Bards in the Woods. B's going to talk a bit about the Bards in the Woods. And uh, he's got this lovely poem. Um, and I'll just fire it to you. It's the uh, mermaid. Sorry he's not here to introduce it to you, but... It's beautiful in its own right. So this is Edward Duran with The Mermaid. The Forest Mermaid. The mermaid swam through the womb portal and walked upon the moist earth. She sang to the moon a wondrous tune. In the forest realm she had her birth. The trees did give her shelter. The plants did give her food. The wind whispered wonder in her ears. She drank from the well of truth. The ocean gave her a seashell to hear the song of the sea. And she swam again in the ocean's swell where all is family. A fawn that swam through a mermaid's womb from the forest became a mer boy. He saw the fair maiden who now had legs swim in the deep blue with joy. He noticed something in the girl and swam up to her mer forest eyes and recognized something that blossoms in the sun that doesn't need a disguise. And she saw the mer forest in his eyes and saw it reflected her own. But she had to return to the woodland realm for that was her hearth and her home. The forest was her home now that gave pure air to breathe and the creatures there were her family too. Her heart grew in the trees. The ocean swelled in her big heart. Its waters nourished the woods. She loved every drop in the lakes and the ponds and dancing the babbling brook. The boy watched the seaweeds wave in the currents, like how the trees dance in the wind, and knew he had a home right here and the woodland realm within. And that was Edward. That was beautiful, Edward. Thank you very much uh, for submitting that one. And as a reminder, that is Edward there. I think that was possibly on a Bards in the Woods session. Uh, the thing with Edward, uh, he's got a book out. It's uh, Deep in the Heart of Nature. Um, uh, do, a, uh, do a search with your favorite uh, book supplier. I'm sure you'll find it. I think it's on Lulu. Maybe you can say something in the comments, Edward, uh, about accessing the book. But that's, uh, I believe that's from his book, The Deep in the Heart of Nature. So thank you uh, so much for that, Edward. Uh, that was a great launch into our day today. And uh, we got Cathal. Uh, well, he's gone now. He was in backstage and... Oh, I think he's back again. Anyway, we've got Cathal coming and going, which is very good. Uh, Adrian uh, Foley, love Ed's. Uh, it's time to listen. Uh, very good. Sharon McNichols here. Good morning to you. Uh, so, uh, lovely. Uh, let's see. There's a couple of things here. Uh, all right. Uh, just people complimenting, so that's wonderful. And uh, now there's someone else who said something. Magical Edward, thank you. That's from Sharon. Uh, who enjoyed the kickoff there. So, yes, thanks very much, uh, Edward. Uh, great stuff. And uh, now, leading on, um, B. Uh, B, we do have uh, on quite a bit, and no wonder, because absolutely wonderful, but we couldn't have a live today again. Because the one thing uh, getting poets for today I think since all the restrictions are flowing away and it's getting towards the end of summer, there's a lot of people seem to be on the road. A lot of the poets uh, that I invited, 
they've actually been packed with guests all week and over this weekend. Uh, so people are on the road visiting people, having their campfires, picnics, and so forth. So I'm grateful for all you who've taken the time to join uh, live, the uh, Nature Folklore just now. Uh, but I understand if you're going to be watching later because of uh, guests and the social time and getting in a bit of summer while you can just in case there is a bit of restriction coming up as well so anyway as i say with uh, b uh, uh b she has this uh website there you go soldier uh smith and uh b smith there uh she doesn't have a book out surprisingly she gets articles in books uh gets poems in books and she from sojourn smith she comes out with the most remarkable poem every week and it just gets better and better over the years she's really focused on her craft and done uh, fantastic st stuff so b's next and uh she's got a couple of poems uh, put into video um one with uh, with a local well because with the uh, Heritage Week uh, in Ireland, there's generally a theme every year, but because suddenly Heritage Week was thrown online because of circumstances, the instruction was, I'll let it be anything in Heritage. We're not having the theme this year. Then it seemed last minute, they said, oh, let's do water and let's keep that loose. The water being a lock or a river or even a pond, a holy well, even the water collection in bogs and the seashore as well. So Bee's taken advantage of this. Uh, she's gone with a local holy well on the video, and then she goes on to the Isle of Inish Murray. So uh, it's, um, I'm going to get Bee up. So this is Bee Smith, a video from her, which I'm sure you're going to thoroughly enjoy. I had her lined up, and... Uh, she sort of vanished again. So, excuse me, I'll get her back up again. Uh, she's <laughs> her video disappeared off of my lineup, but it's not. It's not going to take more than a few seconds to get it back up again for you. So here we go. I think we got her. It should be. It should be here. Come on. Ah, we've technical issues already. Um, right, I've got it. There we go. B Smith. Good afternoon to John and all the viewers. I have two poems today and they have references to bodies of water. The first one is about my local holy well in the townland of Tubber in Dower in West Cavan. In 1863 Tubber was the main locus of population in West Cavan and it's attached to Dubali Parish Church. In 1863, there were at least 55 households in the area. There were pubs, there were blacksmith shops, there was what they called a pound, which is where the cattle were held before there was a market. And at the center of it all was a holy well. And then in June 1863, there was a flash flood. And because we are in Drumlin country, what happened is that the water ran down the side of the hills and Tupper was inundated. And at the end of the avalanche, there were only five houses left standing. And ultimately the center of population moved about a kilometer and a bit over to Dowra, where there was a ford at the River Shannon. The Holy Well, when we first arrived here 20 years ago, was in quite a state of disrepair. The masonry was falling to bits. Um, it looked to be dry, although one friend stuck his arm down inside of it and hauled up. He said, no, there is water there. It just needs to be cleaned out. And, and he did some cleaning. And then about 10 years ago, a local farmer was looking at his land deeds because he needed to make sure that he had a right of way up to a field where he wanted to put his cattle. And he discovered that he owned the land where the Holy Well was situated. And so he assumed the responsibilities of hereditary well keeper and he had it cleaned up. He had it renovated. He donated stones from the field above and he got a mason in from Glan um, who repaired it. And then it was rededicated on August the 15th and ever since then, most 
August the 15th, there is an open air mass there. Last year during lockdown, it was really well attended. Um, this year it was on a Sunday and it still attracted between 50 and 75 people from all around. The first poem uh, I'm going to read is about the Holy Well in the years before it was renovated and the flow was, was clear. And it's called The Cure. The Holy Well stones have crumbled, mortar loosened by the gnarling ivy. The well water is choked, fallen leaves striking the mouth dumb. The water is wholly still down there, a foot below leaf mould. It can cure still. Strung around the ivy-covered tree, growing in and through the stones, the clutes, the teddy, the broken rosary beads, the chipped blessed mother, coins, empty powers, whiskey bottles, shoelaces. This pain is ancient, ongoing. Even when the stone walls fall, what is broken wants mending, what is hurt wants wishing well. The stones want mortar, and those stones that no longer quite fit the pattern lie strewn beside, no longer part, nor yet apart. The mending has begun, but still there is this rubble, fallout, the bits left behind, there so long part of all that was this holy well, hearing the hurt, the petitions, bearing witness to the wishing to be well again. To stand so long half fallen, nearly collapsing from this aggregate of grief, injury, want, loss, desperation, that too is part of the cure. Maybe more so now the water has gone brackish, the cluty tree struggling against its ivy stays. This pain is ancient. There is nothing new. Yet here they sit still in the rain as falling leaves swirl around the well, listening to the steady stream that feeds this well, its seasonal flood its flow constantly feeding the cure. Now, the photos I have provided in a short video clip are how the well is today after it has been recovered. The last poem I'll share with you today is about the island of Inish Murray, which is off the coast of Sligo. And six years ago, uh, a friend who I knew through Bards in the Woods, which was John led for many years, um, and I went on a boat and leaped onto a rocky promontory because it really didn't have a jetty to, ha to tour around the island for an afternoon. And this is the poem that emerged. Inish. On an island, you are always surrounded. Not a bad thing, not necessarily, not always, not even when lashed, cornered by southwesterlies, the sea, the color of a gun, rock outcrop a citadel, wind keeping you beyond reach. From their front porch, before their eyes, mainland sleeping giant becomes transgendered, a paunchily pregnant giantess, drowsily sexy with the mountains ranging to her north and south, standing guard. They have a bit of a bog, a bit of grazing, some seagull eggs, lava bread, grey mullet and pollock, also round stones holy stones etched with art for cursing, for blessing, doing the double, a diet of dread and angelic awe. How could they not come home again 40 years beyond their leaving, bringing back the Brady nieces and nephews to show them what was missed 
and missing on an island you are always surrounded have a wonderful afternoon i'm sorry i can't be with you well there we go uh, b smith as usual uh, absolutely fabulous i'm sure uh, you all enjoyed that and uh, along with some video and photos uh, going back uh, edward uh, Sherry said enchanting. There you go, Edward. Uh, thanks uh, very much for that. Now, uh, that's, as I say, I always get overwhelmed by these poetry sessions because you get carried away by the poems, and I, I forget that I'm supposed to be actually doing a broadcast here. <laughs> so uh, to continue, we've got uh, Fergus up uh, next, and uh, there, there we go. Uh, Sherry, uh, and I know she's a huge fan of Bee's poetry. There we go. Really touched my heart uh, there. So thank you uh, for the comment on there, uh, Sherry. Now, going on to, uh, we've got uh, Fergus now. And uh, I was going to show a picture. There he is. That's Fergus that w was a bloom. We were actually joined, Claire and I joined him with that one as well. Uh, great time. And he's done a fabulous offering, as Fergus can only do. It is in video, but uh, I gather he is uh, watching today, which is fabulous. So th thanks for joining in, even though you're not doing an introduction. Um, so I'll move on to on the line up here, looking for the Fergus poem, uh, which is well and true. Oh, uh, yeah, there's something else. Sorry to make the introduction. I will. I'm going. Uh, I'm getting tongue tied here. I'm going to show Fergus's uh, now. Right, here we go. Fergus, oh. Hi, John. The Vicarja. Um, John, it's lovely to be able to join with you today um, for some of your time talking about the beauty of water and lakes and wells. And I've got back to the lake that I love so much, Loch Aona. You know it, you know it from the woods, Derry Casson, Derry Wellen, Woodville, Larkfield Lane. Um, it's close to you in the Midlands of Sligo. But I wanted, I've been away from the lake, uh, like all of us, because of lockdown and life. And uh, this summer I got back to it for the first time in a few summers. And, um, and I'm gonna try and read you a poem today from the lake. It's called Nature Revisited. When I fall from grace, the truth of my being, out of the story I imagined as real for myself, I return to nature, between woods and water. I sit by the shoreline in silent retreat, and I watch the sun rise, and I watch the sun fall. I watch all the colours in the sky pass by. I make friends with the elements, and weather. I welcome the wind and the rain and the sun. I pray to each one giving thanks for their gifts. Blow these idle thoughts from me. Wash away my sins. Burn new life and love and light deep into my soul. Here I am renewed in communion with nature. Here I talk with the mink and the heron who come to visit a while, with the birds in the trees and the stones at the water's edge, and the trees and the waters too, bearing witness till the end of the day, when the lake swaps the moon for the sun, and the stars up above dance with crayfish below. And I realize in this perfect union, nothing is asked for, and nothing is taken. We breathe and live and let go, always together as one. Bitter and cry. A bitter and cry echoes across the lake, too late. And I wonder why we did the things we did or let it come to this. Absence holds a presence. I still remember the size of your six-year-old hand in mine before I let go. 
There's a time of day at dawn and dusk when the light catches the air and carries birdsong higher, further, deeper. And strange how rooms and empty homes hold sounds and voices too. Wood and stone have memory, as earth and water do. The trees round the shore have seen my sins unfold, heard me confess, watched as I wept in the well that my father dug. And now I see you everywhere I turn and the things you left behind. Your red Swiss army knife untouched since the day it cut you deep, paring a blackthorn stick by the fire. A bottle of gone-off sun cream I forgot to use the weekend you burnt raw. And we cried for nights on end. A tangled mess of fishing rod left thrown in a temper. After a day on water being blown into reeds, casting into rocks and shallows, snagged lines, lost hooks, angry voices carried on thin air. You're not listening to me, I said. You said same. Ah, uh, thanks very much, Fergus. Uh, Fergus, absolutely delightful, as always. And uh, we've just got cat visiting here. Uh, beautiful, yeah, again, enchanting. Uh, that, I think both poems are in Bitten uh, Cry, uh, Fergus's book. He's got another one, which is delightful, The Wisdom of Fionn as well. One day I'll play you him actually telling a story of Fionn, which is uh, fabulous. And I asked Fergus, where can you get these books? And he says they're in bookshops in Waterford. Uh, maybe you need to inquire with uh, Fergus. They're kind of limited release, uh, but absolutely delightful. Thanks very much, uh, Fergus. And as Fergus was there in County Longford, I'm going to stick with that for, uh, for a moment. Uh, this is an encore. Uh, it, we, I can't get this man on live. He's an absolutely fabulous poet uh, from Longford as well. He's quite shy, uh, but he does lovely little videos. And there's a lot of heritage. So I'm going to do an encore from uh, Thomas Carty, who I haven't heard from for a while. So uh, here we go with Thomas Carty. He's just on the next lock, uh, Lock Sala, which is next to where Fergus was. So I'm going to try and find Thomas's video. And uh, here we go, Thomas Carty. I trust you'll enjoy this encore. As if applause, a clap, 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 echoes the evening air. As I walk past spectators, and yet there is no one there. It is no ghostly apparition, of which these lands are famed, of mother's nature's creations, wild and free, but swans untamed. Their wings slap against the surface, as to the sky they take flight. I, a walker, I watch in wonder. They soar high out of sight. I wonder what they think of us as we work and worry in our homes. I wonder what occupies their minds when like fools like me, it's not writing poems. I heard not the cries of the Norman child, and the forgotten keep that no longer stands, slapped by its mother for a reason lost in time, and its pain suited by another's hands. I heard not the cries of a mother and childbirth, heard not the cries of another's fear, as their fortress came under attack, heard not the cry of soldier killed by spear. I heard not the prayers of the Christian man, who refuge from others attacking here found, where he built his home where he never should, upon this ancient burial mound. I heard not the chants of those whose dead were placed here all those years ago, about whom we have learned so much in time, and about whom we so little know. I heard not the orders back in an unknown tongue, 
as of how these stones where were to be placed, by a people of no writing or modern tools, whose technology and knowledge we have misplaced. But I did hear the bird song and the silence that must have echoed so loud and quiet in their ears. That thing all civilizations have in common, the melodious soundtrack of the passing years. The bird and the bee and everything that we see, the brown and dark earth and the grass that is green, all that is nature is living and good. It is where we see where God he has been. The man that helps another though he is not his brother, for he sees that the other is in trouble or ill. In that man we see in our fellow man, God is at work, he is working here still. A dance of joy and survival, shaking shoulders and swaying hips, and an eye out for her lover, with a half smile on her lips. Like her sisters long before her, she sees life as a chance to live, to love and liberty, to the rhythm of the music and dance. And the music of the guitars floats high over the sounds of the throngs, who watch at a distance the musicians and the dancers and their songs. No matter what life is thrown at them, no matter what their enemies do, they will dance and they will sing endure their persecution through. Hatred holds not their hearts, their hearts do full of fear, of the turning of friends against them who today friendly appear. So they keep the music playing, songs of survival and romance, clap to the beat of their hips and feet to the rhythm of the dance. Well, thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, encore from Thomas. Uh, we'll get him on live uh, one day. So that was uh, Thomas Carty. So time to see uh, uh, what you're uh, saying here. And uh, uh, oh, we got Breezy Kelly, the lovely Breezy Kelly from a lovely thatch cottage in Donegal. Simply beautiful. And uh, that must be for bees. Thank you, B, uh, from Sharon uh, Nickel there. Uh, a lovely comment there. And then. Um, We've also uh, Sharon May Nichol. Thank you, Fergus. Mesmerizing, beautiful words and spoken. I would love an audio book. I'm not surprised you asked for that. It would be quite something. There you go, Fergus. Audio book is uh, your future as well. Uh, and Sherry, thanks very much uh, to Fergus as well. I uh, love it. Video was uh, perfection. And uh, that's, uh, and uh, Alan is enjoying the poems. There we go. And uh, Sherry's absolutely loving the show. I'm glad uh, uh, you're enjoying this uh, selection. I must admit, I'm finding it very difficult to broadcast because I get mesmerized. I want to be the audience. Uh, I've had previous two Sundays where it was me just babbing away with no guests. So it's an absolute thrill to me to uh, have these guests and these wonderful poems that seals it all together. So thank you, everyone, uh, for that. Uh, so... Uh, let's move on from here that uh, uh, I'm just sort of excited. Uh, and we got a neighbor. I don't know. She's not on live. Uh, Sinead McClure. Uh, she hasn't got any uh, books out as such. I've got something. Uh, she does have a website, uh, beautiful poetry. She's got a lovely uh, kind of what was called the small holding, uh, a home farm, uh, a beautiful place near because I'm at Karakrori, and then you just go over a woodland, and you uh, you go well, one way you go to Keish, and then uh, Kulfada. She's sort of on uh, Kulfada. So Sinead McLaurin, uh, it's a video that's going to come up with that. So I'll line up the video uh, with uh, Sinead, 
Shanae McClure, very short, very sweet. Uh, I love this. Hi, everybody, and welcome to my corner of the world on this, the last day of Heritage Week. John, thanks for inviting me to read, but you set me a difficult task to read something that was folklore, heritage related, and maybe with an emphasis on water. And that kind of got me thinking because often I don't think about water the way I used to. Um, I used to live nearer the sea and at one point near the ocean. And now I'm about 25 miles inland. So for me, water is lakes and rivers and wetlands. And the wetlands can appear sometimes overnight in this area. So then I got thinking about folklore and nature in general. Where we live is very ancient. So folklore is tied to the landscape and to the nature of it. And I can look out and I can see things that hundreds of years ago, people would have seen the same shapes on the landscape. But there are things disappearing as well. Um, in recent years, we've noted that there's no longer snipe calling in the evening. The curlew is gone. The lapwings are gone. And um, hopefully we won't leave that as our legacy on this wonderful landscape we have in Ireland. But I was thinking along the lines of birds and there's one bird in particular that I think that really holds all the folklore of this area. Well, maybe there's two actually. Ravens, ravens are definitely one, but this, the second one is the heron. So I'm going to read a poem that was published in Live Encounters Poetry and Writing back in November 2020. And this is called Heron. You unfold a feathered accordion, one wing to cast a shadow, now straightening to meet the other. This iron rusted river bed turns the willow leaves above it from silver coins to golden fish you wish you could catch. Even sticklebacks evade you as they tease insects from the wet feet of creeping buttercup. Bored by the wetland, you lazily raise your wings, strike out towards the mountain, pale legs dangling beneath you. Thanks for joining me. Oh, well, thanks, Sinead. Uh, so sweet. I hope you heard that okay. I just realized I didn't get the Sinead's to um, edit the audio because a lot of the videos come in the low audio, so I edit them and increase the audio. So I hope you managed to uh, hear that okay. Uh, Sinead herself, uh, she's a writer, obviously. She's also a radio producer and illustrator. And through March uh, 2021, she won the uh, Bale Word International Poetry Contest. Uh, I know she produces some children's programs for OT, but I haven't got the list of them. But certainly very busy. She probably hasn't had a chance uh, to get a book out. I believe there's a chat book on the way. Uh, but she's written and produced 15 radio dramas as well. Uh, and the radio dramas are on the theme of the natural folklore and nature environment. Uh, so maybe you can look in the archives and pick up some of her uh, dramas. And obviously conservation features very strongly in Sinead's uh, life. Uh, she's actually running a thing called the Calendar Road Tree Project, where people in the project, they plant a tree every week uh, of this year. Uh, so that was uh, Sinead uh, with the heron. Absolutely uh, gorgeous. Thank you, Sinead. Uh, she may well be watching. She watched later if she didn't. And uh, we got uh, lively comments coming in now. Um, there's uh, Kate uh, here. Uh, let's see. Fergus, the day has a new blessing well into our hearts from our heart. Look at that. There you go. Uh, depth of the voice. Now, my song to the walking path is stronger. Love and friendship. Uh, kindly Kate Claire lovely beautiful sentiment there and um, from Sharon thank you Thomas beautiful we're being very spoiled yeah I can agree with that one and Sinead there she's there hello Sinead uh, thanks uh, very it's glad to get you on so there you go Sinead's uh, with us there it's fabulous um, and Breezy never heard of Thomas Cutty before too many people haven't heard of him before 
uh, a library soon. I don't think he's got books out. He makes these little videos. He's uh, uh, what happens with Thomas. He's a security man. He does night shifts security, and he writes a lot of his poems through the night whilst he's on his <laughs> on his night shift job. And then he goes to his cottage in Longford near Locksala there, and. Uh, uh yeah wonderful he as i say is quite a shy poet but boy deep thought and i just love what he does he sometimes appears in a festival every now and again uh as a reader uh and he's a very nice person to meet as well uh very nice um and there's uh Shanae, the joy to hear says kate uh lovely very good and uh and, there, and breezy kelly uh love that and certainly uh, Sherry as well. Thanks for all these compliments uh, coming in. And a new one in, Brian uh, uh, Shooker. Beautiful, wonderful. Good morning from Southwest Florida. We haven't had anybody through the YouTube yet, which is very surprising. Uh, maybe they will later. I hope the YouTube is working okay because I know, unfortunately, with YouTube, there's a bit of music in the background. Boom, violation, and the broadcast stops. I hope that hasn't happened for us this year. And Sinead's reminded me that she is watching. And thanks to everyone for the local, for the lovely comments there. And uh, throw another lovely comment in. There we go, Sharon May. Thank you, uh, Sinead. Uh, so it's exciting stuff. Now we've actually got someone live. Uh, we've got a few people who've been waiting patiently. And we got Eileen. Um, well, I think it's a combination here. Eileen, we're going to have live and video uh, from what I uh, understand. Um, and just line things up to make sure I know where I'm going with, uh, here. Uh, there's, uh, this is Eileen, lovely picture there with, she does these children's books, these beautiful children's books as well. And maybe we can be inclusive of them uh, one day with something. Oh, the one of the book I love, this one. How about this one? Uh, get children to pronounce this. Uh, the Reco uh, oh god, I'm I'm even have a problem with that. Recola Hesperus is that right? Recola Hesperus is one of her children's books, uh, and she does have a poetry collection, uh, dipping into the font. So, we're going to have uh, some of that as well, and um, just get ourselves lined up. I do have a lovely video from Eileen, but we got Eileen here who's actually going to introduce her work to you. And so good uh, good afternoon, uh, Eileen. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. I'm pleased to be here. And um, oh, I chose three I chose three poems from my book um, dipping into the font that you showed already. Great. And on, on the theme of water, and I also did three poems which I have written recently in the last few months, I would say. Oh, yeah. oops, it looks like we're having a sort of coming and going vocal there. Yes. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, you're doing great again, yes. We get this live. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying that I did three poems from my book into the font, which I have here. and on the theme of water, and I did three more recent poems which aren't in the book. There you go, there's the cover of uh, Eileen's book again. Right, uh, if you'd like to introduce the uh, poem and uh, I'll get that lined up, and our oh, poems, a wonderful set of uh, short poems, beautiful set coming up. If you'd like to introduce them, Eileen. Okay, wish I was there is more or less kind of lying in your bed, dreaming of traveling again during lockdown. And just as I get older, I'm anxious to go to more places if I can. Today, tomorrow was, um, I wrote that after being up near Kilglass Lake and I was watching the leaves that students enjoying um, the summer just after finishing their exams and just wondering where will they be a year later. A Day to Remember is a love poem. It's kind of half imaginary, half real. So it's how many young babies might feel. And 
more recent pieces, The Call of the Waves. I grew up on the Isle of Wight. My father was Irish. And I came to Ireland when I was about 22 and stayed. And then I lived in West Cork near the sea again. And now I live in, on the Roscommon Longford border. So I, I do miss the sea. And when I couldn't travel during lockdown, I really felt it. And Dream Home is set in a place in West Cork. And I go back there remembering of something when I was young and thinking about this, the place and the situation. Medina Campfire is actually set on the Isle of Wight of when I was a brownie. I went to my first <laughs> camp to cook food by the River Medina. So those are the poems. Ah, oh, fabulous. Oh, fabulous. So thank you for joining us. It's lovely to have you live. I know it's a bit edgy live, but it is wonderful. It's a lovely addition when we get someone live, uh, even if we just get a, a little embrace of uh, their look. So thank you for being with us, uh, Eileen. Eileen Monaghan and... Uh, there we have uh, a set of poems uh, right now. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Eileen Moynihan, and I'm going to read you the poem, I Wish I Was There. New horizons and faraway places, calling me, calling me over the oceans, from the mountains and the forests to the deep, deep gushing streams that flow into the mighty seas. I dream in my bed of plans and schemes to achieve my goals and live my life with joy, love and passion. As time passes quickly and there is so much to do, I want to travel, to experience the world, its people and places, to lose myself in a moment, to feel shivers of excitement and be totally mellowed. So I must be up and away to catch what is coming but why that flurry of activity doesn't hinder that which calms the soul. New horizons and faraway places, calling me, calling me over the oceans, from the mountains and the forests to the deep gushing streams that flow into the mighty seas. This poem is called Today, Tomorrow. Sitting on a jetty at Kilglass Lake, soaking up the rays of summer sun, relaxing at the end of an era, Catching their breath with fellow friends, laying down memories before ever exams decide their future and they depart to live different lives. This poem is called A Day to Remember. Slivers of silky grey sky sneak sensuously across the backdrop of a dark blue velvet canopy. Sailing boats slide smoothly over a sapphire sea. The breeze breathes life into the white triangles of crisp canvas. Our seagulls soar towards the heavenly horizon, aglow with the ebbing embers of a day to remember. Today you said you loved me. For the first time ever, my heart hurtled in my chest. I had been waiting wistfully for those words forever. Today they came conclusively and I knew their truth. All took on a different light. I floated feather-like inside, through time and flow, here by the sandy shore, wrapped in your arms, on a day to remember. And this is called The Call of the Waves. Oh, how I wish to be beside the sea, now that I'm landlocked here, in the land of rivers and lakes, but they cannot compare. I want to immerse myself in the salty water, Feel the waves lap against my body, hear the call of a girl, feel the sun on my back, the sharp cold of the initial baptism, feel the buoyancy holding me up, float and drift peacefully while listening to the distant sound of children on the beach, to be one with the tide, feeling fresh, relaxed, my idea of heaven. This poem is called Dream House. House of bleak whiteness that stands upon a stage, reviewing the climes and sunsets of the days. With eyes that stare vacant, yet revealed a dream, why didn't your doors open and allow me some esteem? Hidden marshes murmur with the rustle of rushes, 
as cows gradually graze in soggy reed and grass, as I sit on an oath's old stone wall, watching and listening, curlew and concrete call. Today I am here again, looking at that old house, guarding her secrets for generations to come. She held my dreams once, as I said my goodbyes, a lonely place yet where the seagull cries. And this poem is called Medina Campfire, which is a memory of my childhood on the Isle of Wight. Along the river path we ran, garbed in brown and gold, excited, happy girls, for me the first time. My heart was bursting, sun sparkled on water. Tawny owl took my hand, I skipped blissfully along. Suddenly a scream, as a snowy swan flapped mighty wings at the innocent invaders close to her nest. Tawny owl hurried, whispered calmly, to stop screaming, retreat slowly and move on. Subdued, we found a safer place to set our brownie campfire. Collected firewood, built a wigwam shape of sticks, put moss below, and I lit that match. We blew gently to make it smoke. Then a spark burst into flame. We cheered merrily. A frying pan greased, sausages, bacon and eggs. Each took their turn. I felt so proud. And then we sat and ate our efforts. The best meal ever. We heated water on the fire to wash the dishes in a bowl. Play games of tag and hide and seek. Until the sun burnt across the sky. We gathered up our things and headed for home. I pat my pocket where my new badge was safe and sound. Ah, thanks very much. So that was Eileen Monaghan. And there's a book again, uh, dipping into the font. So uh, thanks very much, uh, Eileen. Uh, oh, she's more. Sorry. I think it's repeating itself. But, oh, I know what's happening. You're listening, Phil. <laughs> the delay. A frying pan grease. So so proud. And we sat our efforts. Meal ends in a bowl. Play games of ten We gathered up our things and have a home. Right. Well, I'll leave you to watch the rest there, Eileen. Thanks so much. Uh, that was gorgeous. So that was Eileen there. And... Uh, yeah, uh, terrific. Uh, it's definitely a live show, isn't it? Um, <laughs> uh, so now going back a bit, actually, because uh, with me, it wasn't it was touch and go whether I was going to get a video up. So I had a standby, which was an encore, and I kind of slipped past it. But I'd love to show this. And the reason being, uh, this was on Bards, one of the Bards in the Woods, and we actually had a Bards in the Woods where we went off to the Lake Isle of Inishree, famous uh, for WB Yeats. It's out in Loch Gill. It's a beautiful island. Uh, it's, you wouldn't believe it by when you actually look over Loch Gill, but when you're on the island, it's got these lovely walkways and uh, this picnic spots, and there's an enormous oak tree and an enormous yew tree right in the middle. But, of course, where we went there, I'd, for those of you who were in Ireland, especially the east, we had the tro torrential tropical style rain yesterday. So uh, this reminded me. So this is uh, in some tropical style rain um, that was on uh, the Lake Isle of Inishree. And so we got a bit more of uh, B. Smith again. Uh, there's me sort of saying, oh, here it goes. And uh, I'll get the video up for you now. And uh, so a bit more, if I can get to it. I am the body of Ireland. So this is very heritage stuff right in the middle of water from above and below. B. Smith, a little on call for you. From the ages, time runs as the River Shannon, rising and flowing, long and deep. Sorry. I am the body of Ireland, the holy land of Ireland. I breathed you into being. I washed you, suckled you, warmed you at my heart. I am the body of Ireland, the holy land of Ireland. I am not just a green dream, but your flesh, your grandmother's bones, the blood beating in your breast. I am the body of Ireland, the holy land of Ireland. I am your temple and your fervent fire, 
just this mess of my sacred way, the peace of your grazing cattle. I am the body of Ireland, holy land of Ireland. I am your fear, your heart fully whole, your soul wholly free. Well, there we go. A little moment of Bards in the Woods on a very torrential rain, Loch Isle of Inish Free uh, up there in County Sligo. Uh, Sherry, thank you, Eileen. Uh, they're uh, very lovely. And Sharon, thanking there as well. Thank you again uh, for your comments. And now, uh, let's see, do we have Cathal on board? Uh, now, let's get to another point of the screen. Yes, Cathal's there. So, uh, oh, so I'm, I'm just watching the cat. i got a cat just about to jump on the equipment here. Uh, that, that would be a first, wouldn't it? Uh, anyway, I got the earphones on. Great. Good afternoon, yeah. Cathal. Nice to see you again. How are you doing? Are we all live? Uh, so, yes, good afternoon to you, John. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're looking good. Uh, and uh, right. so, how's your year? I think we it must be nearly a year since we had you on live, isn't it? Uh, it must be you about might. a year, John. Yes, I, I think it is. Uh, screens are all very dodgy. Delay, yeah. Um, it's been about a year, I think, John, or maybe a bit more. All right, can you, and you okay, have you been getting up to? Oh, you're looking and uh, sounding great, and uh, you've been writing much in the last right. year. Uh, I have, yes. Uh, I write most days, and um, you know, whenever those, uh, whenever I, 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 I spirit moves me, as they say. Oh, great! Uh, yes, I've, no, no. I've been writing quite a bit, and uh, enjoying uh, your shows every week, John, as usual. Uh, very nice, oh, gentleman great. today as well uh, for a Sunday. And, yes. Um, yeah, I've enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, uh, just have poems for you, if you want them. I'll, I'll give them up. Yeah, let's see. Let's hear what you got for us today. Looking forward to this. Right. Thanks, Gaffel. Well, I I decided this one got a lot of on wells, and I've got one on on wells as well. So uh, here's one on a well. This is called a well. A well. In a wood, there was a well. Her mouth frond crested, moss clotted with lichen stone. Embracing dark water there, pure and sharp. That seeped deep to her source, underground in the womb earth, birthing her waters upwards to stream forth to welcoming, welcoming sunlight. Nourishing the earth's mother, from her flowing water, sweet and cold, the air made fresh by her water zest, laden with musk of tree and fern, a healing place for body and spirit, where the pagan rhymes with myth in harmony with the gods of wood and stone and well water dark with memory. So that's a wee pump called The Well, John. Ah, wonderful. And if I could just finish it for another little poem for you, it's called The Ninth Wave. I'm sure many of you are aware of the old uh, story from the mythological cycle of how uh, the Malaysians landed here on, on, in, Ireland, in Ireland. And it was on the ninth wave that Amargan came in. Um, and so uh, this poem was called The Ninth Wave on Neotun. On this island whose forest and woodland was laid low at the will of the stranger, we still have a common story here of a land of ever winter as known to the Roman tongue. Nine waves to the shoreline. Amargan, song father, Son of Meled, carried on the ninth wave, stood upon the sacred ground of Ireland and sang the first song of invocation there. Now we must answer that ancient song that sings within our memory and land imagination upon the sands of another uncharted shore of the mind's eye. Discovering new songs to sing to old words, rhyming the past with the present, the circle remains unbroken the old were born anew, again and again, with each new surging ninth wave upon the shore. So, Shane, Shane Major, uh, uh, back to you, John. That's it for me. Okay, that was lovely. I hope you it was great, to, great to get a bit of you again there, Cattle. 
And we'll get oh, you again. Good. Thanks so much well, for that. Lovely. Thanks for your contribution there. Uh, there we go. Uh, uh, we, uh, wonderful having uh, uh, Kathleen McTrainer there. Uh, and now, as I say, I'm in Claire Roach's uh, garden. And Claire Roach has got a little ditty. Uh, is she out in the garden? No, she's indoors, I think. And I'm not going to say anything. She's going to give a little story because she's she's kind of got this wee poem because of something that happened to her. Oh, I see her coming out into the garden now. Uh, so she's on the way out. Uh, and the, uh, here is Claire. Let's get her onto the full screen for you. She's wandering out here. Uh, I hope she's got a signal. She's almost falling into a pond. And uh, she's she sat opposite me beside the pond. There we go. Uh, right, uh, you're settled in, Claire, and we're not getting any echo, which is fantastic. So Claire Roach, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, getting settled in there. That's the that's the pond. Hold on, and there we go. Can you hear me, John? Apart from being beside, I can see and hear you. Yes. Oh, of course, this is difficult because I can actually hear you because you're there. <laughs> Claire, Claire's about six foot in front of me here. <laughs> Where's John? There. Um, no, I don't know what's happening there. Don't lose your signal. Okay, introduce uh, introduce what you're going to share with us. Oh, don't don't look for me. Look for you. Where you are? Oh, we're all over the place here. No, I, I there's my hat. <laughs> Uh, and the uh, brolly because it was drivel, uh, drizzling earlier. There you are. There you are. No, no. There I am. Yes. There Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so anyway, Claire well, yeah, has got a poem because of something that happened to her. Well, you see, I'm usually singing and playing the harp with the harp and um, our harps. But um, story is, um, I was up mowing the lawn in the cottage and uh, there's a pond as you know in the cottage and I said gosh I better not fall into that and then I remembered a story a poem that I read to my son called when daddy fell into the pond and I'm not joking I was thinking that and then the next thing I reversed right back into the pond all the way and um, so it must have been a premonition so anyway, here I am. I don't know whether you can see the pond. It's a small pond. Um, but anyway, yeah, you can. can you? Can you see it? And then there you go, right onto the pond there. And all the lovely little creatures in it. Um, now next door we called it the pond, but it was along a, a it was a farmyard. Um, so that was the real pond. Um. So anyway, I better start. Daddy fell into the pond. A poem by Alfred Noyes. Now, everyone grumbled. The sky was grey. We had nothing to do and nothing to say. We were nearing the end of a dismal day. And there seemed to be nothing beyond. Then, Daddy fell into the pond. And everyone's face grew merry and bright. And Timothy danced for sheer delight. Give me the camera, quick, oh quick. He's crawling out of the duckweed, just like me. Click. Then the gardener suddenly slapped his knee and doubled up, shaking violently. Oh no, shaking silently. And the ducks all quacked as if they were daft. And it sounded as if the old drake laughed. Oh, there wasn't a thing that didn't respond when Daddy fell into the pond. So there you have it. Brilliant. Oh, <laughs> absolutely wonderful. And it was like a 1960s rock festival because I could hear you five seconds away, uh, the echo. It was interesting. Oh, it's lovely to have had you uh, on board for a moment there. I'm sure uh, everybody would l uh, love to um, that you were here and uh, had something. And that was delightfully read. So thanks very much there, Claire. Beautiful. Uh, how wonderful. Yes, and John, can I say... 
that I enjoyed so much everybody's beautiful presentation, but I couldn't comment because um, I was in the back room, you know, the, the other way in the stream yard. Right. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Claire, uh, Sharon uh, says uh, there. And Sherry as well said something. It's not come up yet. Uh, yeah, Sherry said something. It's not coming up for some reason. Um, there we go, Claire. Absolute delight. Love and hugs to you, sweet friend from Sherry. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, that, was, that was so wonderful. And, we, and Cathal got uh, some fans, brilliant from Sherry as well, and Sharon as well. And uh, there's, there's more on Cathal up here as well. Uh, Dark with Memories, gorgeous uh, Cathal from Sinead McClure. Thanks very much, Sinead, for that. Um, and, uh, th and then going back, Kate was saying with Eileen about the childhood memories of the Brownie Troop on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> Very good. Yes. And uh, Sinead was saying how atmospheric it all is. So thanks for all the comments. And there's probably some new ones on Cla uh, for Claire. Uh, let's see what's coming up. Here we go. Kate's got something here. Uh, Cathal the well gathers blessing, birthing water reaches for the sunlight. Nice wave. Kate's got... Uh, Oh, oh, there we go. And, and even Ke Breezy Kelly, look at that. Uh, from ear to ear. Thanks very much, uh, Claire. Uh, so uh, wonderful. Uh, so it was, it was great to have uh, some Claire. Uh, so, uh, right, we, we, we're running into the overtime, but we still got some lovely delights. Thank you very much for people who are holding on and uh, enjoying uh, the show. Uh, there's a quickie here. We were going to have Je uh, Jessamine O'Connor. She couldn't make it, but because of uh, this is so topical, I had to throw in this very short encore, and I hope you enjoy this. Jessamine O'Connor, uh, she has her book. This is from uh, Silver Spoon, which is on the uh, Shannon Press. Uh, oh, uh, now, uh, what have we got? Uh, oh, Claire Roach. I better say this. Claire Roach. ClaireRoach.com, you can get the music uh, there. And we've got Jasmine O'Connor uh, coming up, and I'm trying to get the, the pictures on board. And she has Silver Spoon on the Salmon Press. I'm trying to get a Silver Spoon picture up. Uh, this is Jess's book here. There we go, the Silver Spoon. And uh, I believe you can get that and just anywhere you can order books. So without further ado, an encore of Jess O'Connor. And so this is very topical, very short, and it's her poem, poem Refugee. The island speaks to refugees. Welcome. I open up my craggy arms, my cliffs, this shift of whirling gulls. Stretch my beaches wide. Reach out my hands, made of coral, stone and sand. Scatter islands like roses or breadcrumbs to show you where to land. And when you're close enough, I'll lift up the rough cloth of my hedges, fields and locks, wrap its patchwork cloak around you, gather the lush green folds and rolls of sequin blues to make an earth cocoon for you to grow in. Because when you're rested and ready to stir, it will be my pleasure to watch your wings unfold, unfurl in my cloud thick hair, sprout your new roots feet deep into my lungs and feed me your fresh air.
Great, Jessamine O'Connor there. Uh, I think that was worth a, an encore for just now. And uh, another on Claire, a uh, lovely poem, Team of Laughter. I so enjoy your music and miss you. Lovely to see you kindly, uh, Kate, uh, Claire, lovely. Now, uh, moving on then, to, uh, this was a sort of last minute uh, that uh, is beautiful. It's actually Rosalind Callahan. I haven't got any pictures. Uh, she's of the wildstoryteller.com. And uh, she's got the losses and Lam laments uh, chapbook coming up in October. And uh, she's here to with offer a poem uh, Rathlin Island, and uh, we actually have Rosalind live. Uh, let's get her on board. Uh, here's uh, Rosalind Callahan. Lovely to hear. How are you, how you doing, Rosalind? Yes, uh, hello. Oh, hello, brilliant. John. Yeah, thank right. you. Thank you so much for the, the opportunity to read one of my poems, and what an absolutely gorgeous way to spend a Sunday afternoon seeing all the beautiful images and, and videos and the other pieces that were read here today so thank you very much to oh to everybody. thank you for your patience and joining in and, and, and coming along so i'm very uh, eager uh, to hear rattling island and what you do so f let's uh, I'll, I'll allow you to introduce yourself and what you do in your poem this would be lovely okay thank you this is, this is lovely so like many people, I'm, well, I'm not like many people, but I'm from Derry in the north of Ireland. And certainly during lockdown, I missed being able to go and visit the islands and, and access the seas. And this piece um, came from my memories of days that I have spent on the island. So the poem is called Rathman Island. Sailing. Sailing now from Ballycastle Bay across the Sea of Moyle and her currents of boiling porridge where the children of Lear swam for 300 years, over mermaids and shipwrecks, past the turbulent whirlpool, swallow of the sea, to Rathlin Island, where Marconi changed how language travelled. Like an upside down boot, no more than four miles in width, steeped in history, marinated in mystery and myth between Rathlin and mainland an enchanted isle from beneath waves appears every seven years where if a stone from land is gathered from under a left foot and thrown the sea will never claim again at bull point a city of seabirds clings to precipitous skyscraper crags Chicks cleave to sea stacks crowned with meters of mist. Guillemots, razor bills, fulmars, puffins, and kittiwakes congregate in the chapels of cliff edges, a cacophony of bird calls, hymns over the Atlantic. Foraging, foraging then for refuge in Altnacari Cave, an exiled king inspired by a most persistent spider, returned to Scotland, to Bannockburn and victory. Wailing, wailing then on Crocus Screedlin, Hill of Screaming, as MacDonald women and children cleaved to each other, watching their menfolk slaughtered in the hollow of great defeat before being flung alive from cliffs to unmerciful rocks below. Flying, flying now, are peregrine falcons and a pair of great skua over fields embroidered with standing stones, adorned by handcrafted stone walls, where the nimblest fairies in Ireland dance on the round stone pillars, as inquisitive blue-eyed seals bask at Usher Point and the golden hairs of Runeville and Prance on carpets of rare pink and purple orchids. Sailing, sailing then from Church Bay, where 500 souls, compelled by great hunger, walked onto ships of hope, eyes cast back to flocked islanders waving farewells as the masts sailed inexorably towards and then over heart's horizon to lands 
her dreams turned upside down to absence, longing, fresh hardships and sickness for home. On the cold island, all that's left of them is a commemorative stone. Thank you for listening. Oh, goodness. Uh, thank you for calling on uh, me uh, last minute. So uh, we could have you and the, the poem, even though we are kind of into the overtime. Fantastic. It'd be lovely to have you back for a bit longer session. Uh, as I say, it's a, definitely a multi-poetry session. Maybe you'll have a story on one of our themes. But so many thanks for that, Rosalind, and thanks for uh, getting in touch with me. Uh, so all the best to you. That was lovely. That was uh, Rosalind Gallagher. Uh, the Losses and Laments, uh, Ch Laments chat book is coming up. So uh, maybe we'll have Rosalind on board again in October. So that was Rathlin uh, Island. Um, right, what are you all saying here? Uh, we got, um, and uh, Sherry loved the uh, Jessamine one. Sinead uh, was saying something here was stunning. That must be to the uh, refugee as well. And um, there we go, uh, Sinead as well. Uh, Sherry Murphy, what's... Uh, Rosalind, beautiful, wasn't it? Marinating mystery and myth, the blue-eyed seals, amazing. Uh, very visual, wasn't it? As, uh, lovely. And Sinead lovely, uh, enjoyed that one as well. Beautiful poetry. Thank you, Sinead. And hopefully we'll get Sinead on a lot more now, which is uh, very good. And uh, also from uh, Sharon uh, McNichol there. Uh, wonderful. This is uh, exciting. And... Um, so, as I say, uh, I do the sort of pitching again. Uh, thank you, all of you wonderful subscribers. Could always do with more, of course. And, uh, oh, I must say, uh, going back to Rosalind, there you go, wildstoryteller.com. That's where Rosalind uh, hangs out, wildstoryteller.com, uh, to get in touch with a lot more. It's this fabulous website. You'll get a lot uh, lots of information there. As I say, uh, this is how... The show keeps going. Uh, I have to pay quite a few subscriptions and so forth. And uh, it's lovely. So we can have shows like this, which is fantastic. So any extra help is always uh, very, very welcome, of course. Thank, thank you very much. Even a euro, dollar, or a pound a month to subscribe on that. So uh, coming up uh, next week. Oh, you might be able to help me up with this one next week. It's Sensing Herbs. Again, uh, this, hopefully this is going to be multi guest but I have a bit of a challenge with that because herbalists always tell me they don't like being online. They don't like the social media, but they put videos up. But when I ask for videos, uh, they say, no, we like people to touch the plants. And that's what this is an introduction. So if any of you know of any herbalist guests, because the idea, the theme of this sensing herbs is um, when people, uh, they see a herb, they, they might rush for a book and look it up or even Google it and look it up, uh, watch a YouTube video and so forth. But this whole program is going to be dedicated, though we are online, it seems a bit ironic. It's dedicated to the idea of being like a dog or a horse or uh, uh, any animal, uh, even an insect, a cat, that uh, you – they can't look up books. Animals can't look at books that um, you, yeah, you have to see the plant, smell it, touch it, taste it hold it that and how is what happens when you do that with a plant what do you sense how do you feel it benefits you that's going to be the subject of next week sensing herbs so if you know any uh, herbalists for that uh, uh refer them to me and come here maybe you're amongst them anyway moving on 5th of uh, september we have our harvest home which uh, used to host a caracrory wonderful crack but we're not doing that uh, we're going online again this is when you share your gardens but more important show off the harvest and what you're doing with your harvest uh, home this year sorry for the people watching this from australia because it's the reverse end so this is sort of a northern hemisphere sort of celebration but anyway 5th of september it's harvest home and then 12th of september i always love these this is uh do this two or three times a year the tree sanctuaries uh gathering how are your tree sanctuaries how are your outdoor sanctuaries getting on so that's going to be our autumn gathering on 12th of september so the, like today with the poetry uh, we've got uh, another three sort of community 
uh, events coming on before I start blabbing away with more uh, folklore. Uh, so that's um, that's what's coming up. And we've got one more poem coming up, I should say. That isn't quite the end of it, uh, though, on overtime. i got one more feature for you. Um, and then we got uh, Jasmine, Kate. Uh, where are we going? And uh, the Breezies absolutely love this. Uh, we've got to get Breezy on here somehow. We've got to get you on here somehow, Breezy. With uh, uh, Breezy has this lovely thatched cottage, and people uh, are now turning up, and uh, she tells stories and poems and sings song. Look her up on YouTube. Uh, some lovely stuff there. Uh, th and she's baking. And all this poetry and storytelling goes into her uh, baking and hospitality. It's totally lovely all round up there in Donegal. Uh, so thanks for being with us today uh, as well. And um, so uh, before I uh, go with the, less, uh, the next and it's the last poem, and thank you. All you people that joined in today, Edward Durand, who kicked us off, B. Smith, we had Fergus Hogan, Thomas Carty, Shine McClure, lovely that you're here, uh, Eileen, uh, Eileen, I think the last time I saw you was when we did the Bards in the Woods of Strokestown in their woodland there, and that was a beautiful session, and Cathal uh, McTrina, lovely to have, and, and a bit of a jolly moment with Claire Roach, thank you, and uh, an encore with Jessamine O'Connor, Rosalind, beautiful poem, The Rathlin Island Live. It was lovely to get that. And uh, I'll the last thank you will be on the last poem coming up. Uh, and there's Breezy. Thank you for the kind words that uh, are well deserved. And uh, so uh, if you're watching uh, later, like most people are now watching this in the Sunday evenings and through the week, please keep your comments going. Uh, because I will answer them. So this is our uh, last uh, feature. It is an encore one, but I absolutely love this. It was a dancing uh, in the water. And um, and I, you loved it when I did this with water, and I couldn't resist. I've been finding an ex trying to find an excuse to play this again. So this is Lisa Moran, and uh, she's got... Uh, do you know, I forget what the title is now. Uh, she'll introduce the title as it is, Lisa Moran. And it's a peer, peer as a promise. Lisa Moran to lead us, Moran to lead us out. A peer as a promise. A pier is a promise traversing a lake, a place to contemplate at the edge of life's watery precipice. A pier is a beacon perched on a watery unknown, a reminder of freedom. We are all beautifully entwined yet spellbounded on our own. A pier is a promise at the edge of a lake, a whole fast reed rooted like a compass. A breaker of tides and waves and everything we believe we cannot be. A pier is a magical horizon between land and sea where water dances and breaks bellowed from the deeps rolling, playing and renewing for all eternity. A peer is a sanctuary, a watcher and keeper of a sacred holding space. A gatekeeper for a life-giving watery embrace. A 
Pier has one eye on the holder and a tree strong base. It's where we go when we don't even know to slip into blue green twilight haze. A pier is a place of hope where dreams float on an oak embowed boat. A pier is a wise place where a knowing is comfortable with the unknown and you feel it in your bones. A place of promise where you can acquiesce and sense a new day And life's promise can and has begun. Lisa Moran, uh, lovely to actually be able to on-call that again. I hope you enjoyed seeing that again. Uh, and uh, Patricia, lovely, to, who from Vancouver Island, I hope you uh, watch the entire archive. Uh, lovely to have you here, though, Patricia. Thank, it's been quite a wonderful afternoon. And Breezy here, uh, introducing that, uh, join me over the half door, so be talking much more about that uh, when we talk about uh, the Harvest Home edition especially. And even with the Harvest Home, it's going to be like uh, every one th uh, broadcast from a thatch cottage uh, over the half door, talking to someone else over a half door. So that's going to be uh, quite exciting. So th uh, that's uh, that was the last poet. Please uh, subscribe through the bell button uh, if you're watching from the YouTube. There might be one on Facebook as well. It's been lovely having you here, Zizke. Thank you, uh, all of uh, the poets and the contributions and all your complimentary comments as well. Uh, and this has been a fabulous show. It's hard to say bye-bye to it all, but... Uh, it leaves me now to wish you all uh, to enjoy a safe week that's full of wonder, inspirations, and enchantment. And I hope you'll all be back again and more next Sunday. So until next Sunday, do uh, enjoy yourself, uh, look after yourself, play well. And that's all from me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.